Hello folks, it's the Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Out and about today on this beautiful summer's day. Today I'm riding a Harley Davidson Fat Bob. What an absolute beast of a bike. Stick around, stay tuned, I'll tell you all about it. So welcome back to the channel folks and uh, thanks for joining me once again as I say on this beautiful day. I'm actually recording this at the end of August, so I suspect you'll be seeing this a month, a, few, a month or two down the line. It may well be the depths of winter when you see this, so uh, if that is the case, this is what a nice summer's day looks like. As I say, I'm on the uh, Harley Davidson Fat Bob 2021 bike. It's a uh, Bobber style machine with big fat tyres, hence I assume why it's called a Fat Bob. I have to say, it's a beautiful looking machine. So let me show you why I think this is such a good looking machine. First off, the colour on here, look, it's got this sort of military look about it, this green. I'm always a little bit unsure about matte finish on bikes, but I have to say this one in the flesh looks absolutely beautiful. And then they've got this interesting sort of stove-like finish on the cylinder uh, heads here, which looks really rugged and hard wearing. And then they've similarly got a sort of a ruggedized bronze look uh, covering the exhaust as well, which uh, I think really suits this particular colour. Uh, and I think it's just gonna make the thing easier to live with than uh, having all the chrome that you so often do on Harleys. Um, it's got, you know, everything about this thing is big in, in a classic Harley way. I mean, look at this uh, brake pedal. It looks like, um, no jokes here, please, but it looks like it comes off of a tractor. It's that massive. Uh, what else can I show you? It's got these massive bars on it, which look incredible. Look at these forks. They are huge. Let's see the best angle. But the width of these forks on here, can't really get a good angle, but they're really wide. Of course, they necessarily have to be because of this massive chunky tire on here. What I do like is the way that they've done the, um, some of the branding on here. So if you look at the tank, look, Harley Davidson badge, but no Harley Davidson. You have to go over here and it's sort of asymmetrically done. It says Harley Davidson here on the tank, which I think looks really cool. And then also uh, the wheels, you probably noticed that just now, but down here, look, it says Harley Davidson on the rims, which look really, really good. So yeah, I think uh, in terms of looks, they've got this absolutely bang on. It is a big old bruising cruiser and I love it. When Harley Davidson delivered this up to me this morning, as it rolled off the truck, I instantly fell in love with the looks of this. I never thought I'd be a Harley man, but the more I ride them, the more I appreciate them. Yes, they're noisy. Yes, they're basic. Yes, they're uncomfortable. Yes, the mirrors vibrate. Yes, they're expensive. But my goodness me, they are fantastic. So already, uh, somewhat of a spoiler alert, I guess, because I've blown it that I really like this bike. Lots of things I like about it. The looks, first of all, and then when you sat here, look at what you're looking at. Look at these handlebars. Just flat and mean looking. Nice and wide so that they can hide all the cabling inside the bar. So it's a very clean looking design. And then you've got this beautiful instrumentation here. Just a single dial. And then in the bottom you've got a little LCD window with a proper fuel gauge, your speed. And then you've got trip counters and things like that in another little window. And that is about it. Very, very simple. But you don't need anything more, do you, about that? And that's the other thing I like about this bike simple there's no there's no excessive electronics in fact the only thing really that's got electronic is uh traction control not traction control so i don't think it has got traction control it's got abs and it's got uh, led lights which really look fantastic i'll show you those in a second so i promised you a look at the led lights here we go uh, that's what it looks like uh, without anything turned off we bring the bike to life by pressing that one there we go, that's what the uh, light looks itself. I'm hoping I'm gonna get the chance to have a ride of this in the dark and see how that performs. But uh, yeah, it looks pretty bright, pretty cool in its uh, daytime running light mode. It does also have keyless ignition, which is something I'm not a massive fan of. And it doesn't make a huge amount of sense in this case because it's got a what looks like a non-lockable fuel cap. And if you wanna lock the steering, you have to use the key anyway. So I'm not sure what that's all about. But anyway, I'll, uh, I'll pass on that because other than that, there aren't really any electronics on this bike, so you just jump on and enjoy riding. At the end of the day, if you're just riding a motorcycle for fun, which is what I'm lucky enough to do, then that's what it's all about. I get electronics on track bikes, on high-spec sports machines, then yeah, you need everything you can have to help you squeeze the last few tenths of a second out of a lap. But if you're just out enjoying a Sunday lane, which is the sort of thing that this bike's built for, then you don't need them. This is just pure motorcycling enjoyment. All right, enough of the gushing. Let me go through some of the practical matters. Comfort on here. And the seat, I have to say, is very comfortable. 710 millimeters, that seat height, so really low. Just experience that torque. <laughs> oh, so good, it blew me camera off. 
let me just sort that out right camera sorted so we've established it's got plenty of torque so much so that it'll easily defeat my uh, GoPro mount so watch that where was I yes comfort the seat well, the seat's very comfortable it is a single seat there is a little sort of a pillion perch but it's really not up to much I'd probably take that off if the bike was mine just to make it look a bit cleaner at the back end the seat itself very comfortable you can't move around on it so if you're the wrong height for it tough uh, but it seems to exact absolutely suit my height I'm five foot eight relatively long legs 32 inch length leg I think and uh, yeah I'm finding it very comfortable the only thing I would say is it's one of these feet forward bikes but look down here look my feet are forward on the pegs uh, it's not extremely forward they're not way out in front um, it's one of the less extreme cruisers in that respect but I suspect after an hour or so you start to get a bit of pain in your lower back I'll find out as I ride the bike more this is as I say is my first ride first impressions review but so far it feels very comfortable and although I'm not a fan of feet forward riding positions this one as I say not very extreme handlebars nice and wide as you can see and really comfortable in that respect and they look cool as well that's the thing the people that don't get Harley Davidson's and I was one of those for many years it's just you're not getting how these bikes make you feel when you ride and that's that to me is the most important thing forget all the specs forget all the uh, technology and so on do you enjoy riding the bike and the answer on this is yes it's just brilliant handling wise it's much better than it has any right to be around this 90 degree sweepy corner it sticks to the road lovely it is a nice warm day and the roads are nice and warm big fat rubber of course as I mentioned on here and although they look knobbly they are basically road tyres but even though it's got big fat tyres front and back the handling doesn't feel particularly compromised I have to say in fact it's probably one of the uh, better handling cruisers I've ever ridden there's no hiding the fact that this is a heavy bike uh, it comes with a couple of figures Harley Davidson quote 306 kilograms in running order so wet uh, and then as shipped 296 kilograms so uh, yeah heavy but uh, actually relatively easy to lug around because the weight is all held low and if you sat on it because it's got that low seat height you never feel like you're gonna drop it it's not a problem the beauty of this the seat is nice and low and therefore you can get your feet down easy so yeah full marks for comfort I've already talked a bit about the instrumentation which I absolutely love switch gear on here typical Harley Davidson proper clunky switch gear you know when you've pressed it I like that about it it's solid stuff feels well made as does the whole bike of course it feels like it's been hewn out of solid lumps of metal you can feel the engineering doing its thing as you ride it and that's what I love about these bikes mirrors on it not too stalky I like the looks of them they work okay a little bit of vibration out of them but hey we're on a Harley who cares but they do work well actually the mirrors are fine just a little check behind me there's a car a little way back but uh, I'm just going to check the brakes and here are the brakes double disc brakes on here um, and they seem to work fine on the front they're badged Harley Davidson uh, I don't know who actually makes them whether they hardly make them for themselves but uh, yeah they seem to work fine on the front on the rear um, it's adequate as I say uh, just a single disc on the rear rear is a bit meh aren't they often handy just to help you straighten things out on corners if that makes sense I know what I said there <laughs> yeah the rear brakes not particularly particularly sharp but it's uh, good enough oh what a beautiful day look at these crops are in I mean although I'm uh, extolling the virtues of a British summer's day here I'm recording this I think I said the end of August 24th of August I think it is it has been a absolutely rubbish summer here this year here in Blighty one of very few nice days I've been out on the sound of the bike is lovely through the standard pipes just sounds mean it's not obnoxiously loud I'm sure you can get some aftermarket Harley parts to make it louder if you want to but it's just perfect for me because it's not so loud that it's going to annoy you to death or your neighbors it's got, it's got that nice low rumble the bike is fitted with the Milwaukee 8 air-cooled engine just over 1.8 liters in size I'll talk you through the specs of the engine right talking of the engine uh, I've got the numbers at hand now so that this engine at 114 cubic inches so that in uh, the old money is uh, 1868 cc the Milwaukee 8 uh, as I mentioned an engine that I've seen uh, in all sorts of uh, Harley or pretty much all the Harleys I've ridden so far uh, power wise uh, Harley ready to talk about it but uh, 93 brake horsepower is the number uh, that's at 5020 rpm so nice and low down as you'd expect torque wise 118 pounds feet or 155 newton meters at 3500 rpm so again it's all about the grunt on this one and it just hums along no stress whatsoever 
not massive horsepower numbers on this bike but it's all about the torque it's all there pretty much in every gear talking about the gears the gearbox actually it is a little bit clunky as Harleys tend to be but it's it's by nowhere near the worst Harley gearbox I've ever tried for sure it's actually not too bad and the clutch itself demands quite a hefty pull again just reminding you that you're on uh, something that's been built by big burly blokes with spanners and hammers yeah I really like this and uh, I think the last Harley I rode which was the uh, was it the soft tail standard I said was my favorite riding Harley to date well I think this might have eclipsed that now each Harley I ride they get better and better this I think is the fourth Harley I've ridden I've done the f uh, fat boy the soft tail standard and uh, one other previous to that which name escapes me but I'll put up on the screen if I remember I've loved them all from an engineering point of view but uh, this one's been the best yet to ride and they all put massive grins on your face don't be a Harley snob if you've never ridden one give one a go you might be surprised if I had room in my garage and the cash in my pocket I would definitely have one of these in there I've got to try the rest of the Harley range first before I uh, do anything rash but I would very happily have this in my garage it is a lovely lovely bike suspension actually is lovely I don't know if it's because those fat tires or what but uh, really bumpy roads I've just ridden through and actually it's been a lovely lovely ride talking about the ride quality forks on here massive uh, upside down uh, forks on here these are from Showa I believe uh, they are absolutely huge to accommodate that wide tyre uh, no adjustment on it but uh, as I say rides absolutely fine no need for adjustment as far as I'm concerned then on the back uh, hidden amongst here in this soft tail is a single shock uh, and it looks like you've got a bit of a remote adjustment there as well for preload I must apologize by the way for this helmet that I'm wearing I usually like to wear something a bit cruisery when I'm out on a cruiser I'm a big fan of dressing according to the bike that you're riding and to that end if you're interested in the kit that I'm wearing I've got some new stuff on today and stick around and stay tuned to the very end of the video I will do one of my fashion segments and talk you through all the kit that I'm wearing to uh, save me answering all those comments about what was that jacket you're wearing or what are those gloves I'll go through all that at the end if you're interested after the credits just as I indicated to come around here it reminded me that this has got the funny Harley Davidson indicators i.e. it has a switch on here to go right and a switch on there to go left and if you want to cancel them you press that button again but actually it has auto cancelling as all the Harleys I've ridden do which works pretty well so you don't really have to worry about cancelling but they just it just works this particular bike has a beautiful fit and finish to it no chrome on this one now, of course I'm a big fan of cleaning bikes and polishing them up but if I had a really chromey Harley I would always be a bit uptight about getting it dirty whereas this one with the finishes it's got the sort of um, almost stove baked look and the military-esque green finish I wouldn't be too worried if this one got a bit of dirt on it, it might even add to it I say that of course I would clean it off but uh, I wouldn't be too concerned about the, uh, the finish on this getting troubled by a bit of dirt the bike itself comes in three colours this green can't remember what it's called but it's a matte green a gloss red and a gloss black I quite like the looks of the gloss red I must say but this one in the flesh has really impressed me I know what you're thinking, how much is one of these going to cost you? 16995 so just shy of 17 grand. No doubt it is an expensive machine, but it is a beautiful bike. Alright, so that's pretty much it for my uh, first ride review on the 2021 Harley Davidson Fat Bob. As you've gathered, I absolutely love it. So far on this first ride, I can find nothing to say that I don't like about it. It's a Harley, you've got to take that in mind, and, you know, be in the spirit of what Harleys are all about. Massive grin factor, rides beautifully, looks amazing really love it I've got this for the next week or so I will try and ride it a bit more and maybe do a bit of a hog vlog so if you're interested in this motorcycle stick around and stay tuned to the channel and uh, hopefully I'll bring you some more soon and don't forget that fashion segment after the credits if you're interested in my ensemble today all right that's it for now I hope you enjoyed that look forward to speaking to you again soon until then this has been the mist and fly cheerio
Aha, still here. Excellent. Thank you for staying. Stick around to the bitter end for my now uh, infamous fashion segment. So I'll take you through the bits and pieces I was wearing. First off, my helmet. You've seen this many times. This is my HJC Rafa 11. I love this. I've got two of these. Um, and uh, this one, the nearest one you can get now is in a Cal Crutchlow colour scheme. Uh, and that one, if you want to buy one, it will cost you uh, £324.98. I'll put a link below uh, to Sports Box Shop as to where you can get this helmet if you're interested. All right, next up are my, uh, actually, here we go, my earplugs. Here we go, they're my custom fit guards. These are called CF Autos. They're brilliant to have them custom made uh, because they obviously fit your ear. They're nice and comfortable and they do a great job. Uh, they are a sponsor of the channel and that means that you can get 10% off. If you use the code FLYER10 uh, at their website, again, I'll put a link below to these earplugs and you can get 10% off those. Thoroughly recommend they come to you to do the moulds, make it very, very easy. Uh, next up, oh, my neck tube. This is my own from my website, www.missingandflyer.com. That'll cost you uh, eight pounds. The gloves, people often ask what gloves am I wearing? Here they are. The ones you saw me wearing here uh, from Oxford, these are called their Brisbane gloves. These are in stealth black. Uh, very excellent gloves in that they're, they're, they're summer ones are nice and meshy, nice and cool and lightweight and fit beautifully. No uh, breaking in required. Properly pr um, protective, but only $29.99. They're from Oxford products, as I say. Link below again to that one. Uh, next up, oh, newer item or item you might not have seen before. This jacket, this leather jacket, is one of two go-to leather jackets of mine. This is uh, from Richer. It's called, if I'll just look it up, the Daytona 2 and it'll cost you £299 to say this is one of my favourite leather jackets. Right, next up I've got some new things you've not seen before so just let me get the jacket off and I'll show you them. Right, jacket off. This here, my um, Furigan airbag vest. I've started wearing this of late instead of one that was tethered. It's a really great bit of kit. It costs £349 and then there's an annual subscription of about £100 which has clever over the air software updates. It's got an amazing um, back projector already built in and of course it knows when you've crashed because of the clever electronic algorithm and it only inflates if you crash it doesn't inflate any other way i've thrown it around my room i can't get it to inflate so it's very clever runs with something called the in and motion technology uh, in fact let me take it off i'll show you that hang on See that there? There's like an electronic pad at the back. It shows that the I've got a good GPS signal and battery at the moment. And uh, yeah, it looks like that in motion is the technology. But uh, yeah, I really recommend that. Nice and comfortable, lightweight. It's uh, you see the material's high tech, so it's uh, has some good airflow through it. So that's the airbag. Next new thing I want to show you are my jeans. I'm a big fan of riding jeans, and the pair I've got on today are brand new. These are premium uh, riding jeans, and they're from a company called uh, PMJ. These are their de denim jeans, de as in D-E-U-X, the French word for two, I believe, if my linguistics are correct. And these are beautiful. They come complete with a belt, which uh, makes a change. Can you see that? Uh, and as I say, they are premium jeans. They are single layer, triple A rated. There aren't many jeans that are that protective. So that makes them more protective than the best leathers you've got. They will cost you £206.98 but they are a real premium garment and then last but not least in this fashion segment my boots again these in this put a big boot mark on the Harley uh, here we go these again are from Italy they're a lovely boot they go way up the ankle properly protective uh, and these are from Falco um, in, they're called the Falco Gordon boots and believe it or not these are in color green although of course they are they are brown but they're called green uh, and these will cost you £179.99 couldn't find the exact ones on the uh, on sports bike shop because these are quite new products but by the time you see this product they should be there but anyway i'll put a link below to sports box shop to all those things so if you want to check them out you can do full disclosure those are affiliate links so if you click on those links and you subsequently buy something then i do get a little bit of a pushback but you are helping the channel uh, what i would say is sports box shop are very competitive it won't cost you any more and you'll find their service and returns policy is excellent they don't pay me to say that i just think that's the case all right that's it for the fashion segment uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon cheerio